Yo, what is going on? Today, I am very excited to be doing a quick little overview of these two knives right here. Um, I didn't do an unboxing for either one of these, mainly because I didn't quite have time to do this one when it came in and I was too excited and I just went ahead and opened it. And then this one, because it was a gift from my girlfriend, so it was already uh, unboxed in a different box when she gave it to me. But um, we'll get started, I think, first with this guy. This is the Hogue Deca. Let's see there. And this guy is in Magna Cut. So I'm super excited for this knife because um, I've been hearing a lot of good stuff about Magna Cut and especially for the price, I couldn't pass up taking a chance to uh, give it a try. A lot of people are touting it as what will hopefully maybe be the ultimate uh, knife steel or just EDC steel. Um, it's supposed to be super tough. It can be hardened super hard up to, I believe, 64, 65 Rockwell, which uh, I'm not you know, a metallurgist or anything, but I do know that that is pretty, uh, pretty high up there and should make for some pretty crazy good edge retention. And uh, it's also super stainless. Now this is a coated blade, so that uh, stainlessness isn't quite as necessary. But um, I mean, yeah, it's a steel that I wanted to try. And since this was barely over a hundred bucks and the next cheapest that I've seen with Magna Cut is like 200, 250. I was like, you know what? Let's give it a shot. Did I really need it? No. But did I want it? You betcha. So. Um, yeah, Magna Cut, awesome. We're gonna give that a try. I also wanted something a little bit more fidgety with an axis lock on it, if I'm being honest. Um, I like the axis lock for playing with, but um, I like having the option of the reverse or the thumb flick for opening with thumb studs. And I do like slightly larger knives for my main pocket carry if you want to call it that that's my knee knife that's the one that you know might be a little big for pulling out in public but uh, that's why i carry something a little smaller with me as well but my previous uh two axe locks were the venerable benchmade mini bug out which is an incredible knife don't get me wrong but it's a little on the small side for what i'd like for my main pocket carry so I uh, haven't really carried this one too much. Um, my second pocket carry, I like to keep a little on the cheaper side for, and usually like a little liner lock so that I can have something to lend to people that I don't really care if it gets damaged. And with it being a little bit smaller then yeah, this guy was a little pricey, bench maybe. And so um, I try not to carry this guy too much as that secondary knife just because you know i don't know how people are gonna treat my things if i uh, let them borrow them so i also have the oh if i can get it around the camera here sorry you might have seen my head i also have the actin on verba a100 which i do love this knife it's oops, can't even get used to that guy it's used to or um it's been a go-to for me for a while. It's a much larger knife than the mini bug out, as you can see. It's also quite a bit larger than the Deca here. But it's an LMAX, which I absolutely love and uh, can't really complain about. Um, but it only has this thing, the single thought, ugh, single side thumb stud. Say that six times fast. It's only got the single side thumb stud and so it's not quite as fidgety when I'm playing with it as I would like. I do like having that reverse flip to, you know, kind of switch things up a little bit. Um, so that's been my uh, previous two axis locks. Technically, I mean, I do have a uh, Manix 2 lightweight, but that's not quite the same and that definitely doesn't feel anywhere similar to an actual axis style lock using those uh, Omega type springs. But 
This guy has been great so far. It's super light. It's only about two ounces. It slides in and out of the pocket real nice. Um, it's a little hard to get in the pocket sometimes because um, this clip is actually pretty stiff. I read some um, comments on other videos that I've seen saying that, or I've actually seen in other videos, people saying that these clips were really, uh, really loose and I have not seen that so maybe they changed it up from that feedback I don't know um, but the one thing that you know is going to be a consistent complaint with this guy and one that I will go ahead and make is that this stuff is super smooth it's not completely slick like I don't feel like it's gonna fall out of my hand or be easily yanked out of my hand um, this milling does do a decent job of giving you some grip, but it is FRN, it is untextured, and just is barely, uh, barely slick. So um, with it also being injection molded, there's a couple spots where there's like some flashing, but that's not really a big deal, especially for the price on this guy being only, what was it? Like a buck 15. So this has been an excellent, excellent, uh, user I've had this for about a week now um, and used it a few times I don't have to cut a ton in my daily life so magnet that's probably overkill but um, you know I like the blade shape I like the look so went ahead and got it now let's move on to my current actual favorite knife that that was for three days two days and then I got this guy and oh boy this is definitely currently my nicest knife. As I mentioned, my girlfriend got it for me. We just hit one year together and I was flabbergasted when I pulled this thing out. You know, I've known about Fox knives for a while. There we go. Clip that the right way. And, um, you know, they're on the expensive side. This one is no different. This is the Fox Vox Suru. And it, as you can see there, it's an M390, made in Italy. It's got this beautiful, I wouldn't say it's polished satin finish, but it is definitely a bright satin finish. Uh, the choil here is somewhat polished as well. Full carbon fiber handle. And that's one of the interesting things about this. It's a, it, the, it's a frame lock, obviously, with a uh, steel lock bar insert, over travel stop, but that lock bar is actually carbon fiber. So is this a hard use knife? Not really, I would say, because carbon fiber is tough. It's pretty durable, but it is not, it's not the most durable to like shock and other stress like that. So if you were to be trying to like baton this through something, which I don't know why you would with a blade this small, but you know, you're risking shattering that for sure since carbon fiber is a brittle material. Uh, that being said, it makes this knife super duper light. Even with this lanyard that I put on here, this thing is like two ounces as well. So not quite, uh, you know, with the size comparison here, it's not, you know, quite as light overall in ratio as this guy. However, look at that blade. Look how beefy that blade is. That is a thick, thick blade. I've been watching videos on this guy. I haven't measured it myself, uh, but I know this, this is about 94 thousandths for blade stock thickness. And this guy is, I mean, especially at the rear here, you're looking at probably 180 thousandths there, I'd say. So it, yeah, it's a thick blade blade. So that gives a lot of weight to the, to the knife that, you know, the full carbon fiber handle construction might belie. The action when I first got it was very, very gritty. It would not flip out with the flipper and that was solved just with a little bit of lube and uh, the travel as well when closing it was pretty gritty at first until I you know flipped it a couple
couple hundred times and sort of smooth things out, I believe. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see there, I think, the detent ball. Uh, I believe that's a ceramic one, so it just needed a, a little bit of time to cut its way into the uh, into the steel there, get a little channel going, and now it is silky, silky smooth. So I'm really liking this knife, full titanium hardware. I've got a titanium or a few titanium uh, lanyard beads coming in that I'm going to try to heat heat color to this nice bronze and I'll probably lightning you know or lightning uh, entropy heat color whatever term you want to use uh, a couple of the beads and uh, see how those look but yeah I am absolutely loving this knife so far I do have one other frame lock and it's the uh, Ferrum Forge Crux and while I like that knife even though that's also a flipper frame lock it doesn't feel nearly as fun to play with as, as this guy. Uh, it is definitely a little bit more of a drop shed knife. This one, you've got to shake it relatively hard to get that to drop. But uh, I am really liking this so far. I thought one nice touch as well was the zirconium uh, ball bearing on the clip. And this thing slides in and out of the pocket like nobody's business. There were a couple flaws with the carbon fiber itself around these holes that have build, been milled in um, and that i believe is just some chipping out with the carbon fiber being so uh, so brittle during the uh, milling process but yeah this is a this is a fun one you got the flipper which works fairly well i do fail it sometimes um, it if you push button it decently hard It'll flip out pretty much every time, and it flips out really well with the light switch. Uh, but you do have that hole as well, so you can give it the reverse flick. Although I would say, I don't know, it's a little sharp in here, so I do feel it catch my fingernail, but I don't know how well that would work without that being the case. Uh, but it is a, a fun little flick, and then you can do it with the thumb too, but uh, with how small the knife is, it's hard not to push into that lock bar with uh, your other fingers when doing it with the thumb. So I usually will reverse flick it since that's a little more comfortable or the flipper works perfectly well. And yeah, this thing is a great little EDC workhorse if you got the thumbs to uh, pick up a fox. So that's it for today, I think. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate the watches and the likes. I think I just hit like 250 views or actually I think I'm almost to 500 views on one of my videos which that's awesome uh, thank you guys and we'll see you next time peace